Hey guys and welcome back. So we're going to talk about heat bloom because it's a really easy way of making models look more interesting like this Gorgon Terminator without me having to pick out all the detail on the gun. It's a bit of a cheat but they, they do look really really good. Um, this is a commission piece so I've already done one so I have a guide um, to guide me through it but it's really quick. I advise you to do it and yeah just put a bit of damage and this this is what it'll end up looking like a similar kind of effect to this um i always go purple to blue you can go blue to purple i mean you can really play with this and do a lot of things um but i like this effect uh, i like the way it looks against the kind of very dark uh, paint scheme that i've developed with a client for his iron hands this kind of very industrial paint scheme it looks quite good alongside that it's not too cartoony Anyway, so here are the paints. Uh, I like to start quite bright, sort of pale. So I'm using bright brass as my kind of initial transition from the, the normal metallic on the gun. Then I'm going to Hetch Lichen. This is a great color. Uh, it works for so many different things. Um, pick it up. It's a great Vallejo air paint color. Uh, then I'm going to go to blue. Um, just normal blue. That's what I would use for ultramarines or something like that. And like I said, some people would go sort of brass, blue, purple. I go purple, blue. Um, and this is an addition I do. This is a metallic black from Vallejo. I just spray the very tip with that. And then finally, Iron Warriors, because it's a, it's a really nice dark silver. Just to add a bit of kind of um, metallic on the very tip of the muzzle. So here we go. This is us doing our initial layer of uh, bright brass. It's quite a thin paint, so it's hard to see. Uh, but essentially, I'm kind of spraying just past uh, the supporting bar for the muzzle break. Um, and I'm spraying a bit further away so it's not too concentrated. Because the paint's so thin, if you're right up towards it, because it, it, it's not drying initially, you'll just spray the paint out and it'll look all lumpy. So I would do what I'm doing here. And then that was me giving it a hair dryer just to, to dry it off and um, to get that initial. You can see how thin the paint is there on the glove. And then just reinforce that brass color. It's quite hard to see against the silver, but once you start laying up the other colors, um, you'll notice it. It's very, very noticeable. Um, that's it there. Uh, this is perfectly achievable with a brush as well, guys. Just do maybe three very thin layers of each each color for that transition. Um, I use a brush when I'm doing uh, combi weapons, for instance. So here we go, hatch light. And you want to thin this down quite a lot, uh, maybe 50-50 with whatever your thinner is. And look at that, what a great color. The transition is immediate. Um, <clears throat> part of me, it's kind of almost too purple. Um, so concentrate on the very tips. Get get. That's where you want most of your color to be. Uh, that that's where you want that purple to be saturated and I'm just kind of as I'm moving further down the barrel I'm moving the brush further away so that you get more of a dispersed pattern um, across that bracket that support bracket for the barrels there and that's it uh, and already I mean if you stopped there the camera doesn't really pick up the brass until you get the blue on it um, if you stopped there it would look awesome. It already looks so much more interesting and literally that takes high far away in a few minutes into the video. Uh, so on to blue, uh, thin this out again about 50-50. You don't want any of the colors to be too too bright. And the reason I go purple onto blue is because I find this just makes the weapon look like it's been heated up to a really high temperature. There you can see it there. It's got that kind of, if you've ever seen the end of a Zippo, it's kind of like that if someone, if you know someone who's got a Zippo that's very old, the metal is kind of discolored in that fashion. Uh, and we're, don't, again, we're just doing the very tips. I'm kind of just going up to the uh, flash suppressor, which is the holes in the muzzle, basically. Um, and then further away, so you get a bit of dispersal onto the purple, so you get a graduation. That's it. I'm literally hitting this with a hair dryer in between, guys. This took me like literally 10 minutes with setting up the camera and things. That's how quick it is. Um, so, like, 
it's an amazing technique and then there's this uh, metallic black it's not really black it's like a really dark metallic gray but it's brilliant for the backs of shields and for things like this pick some up you won't regret it it's, i mean it's like two pound a bottle or something um it's the best kind of metallic black i've found on the market um and i've used a few but uh, i like it so i just stick with it but anyway you're really just catching the tips here so i'm actually spraying so that only the left hand part of the spray from the uh, airbrush there is catching the very end of the gun, the gun barrel. Um, so, so most of the paint is actually hitting the cardboard on top of my desk there, which looks like I probably need to change it. <laughs> um, and you'll see here, it, it just it just acts a little bit like soot, but, it, but it's not completely matte. So it's got a nice shine to it, uh, which is important for the final stage, which is coming up because we're about to make that kind of really pop and then that um, metallic black that we just put on will look a lot darker so Iron Warriors fantastic color um, really happy that Citadel are bringing out their old Forge World colors in little pots I mean I'm not gonna lie I don't think they're as good as the Forge World ones but they they seem to have the right kind of chroma um, so yeah just a bit of dry brushing guys can't beat a bit of dry brushing um, and literally, we're just going to catch the very ends of the gun so that it looks like it's been fired and used because um, the whole thing wouldn't be suited up. And, um, yeah, you can see, because uh, it's a bit of it over... I overbrushed it there. I wiped that off uh, after the video. Um, but you can see that the, the kind of dark metallic that we put on looks a lot darker now when you rotate the barrel. Um, I think he looks, he looks bad-ass. He it just, like... That entire miniature has been transformed with uh, five minutes work and literally all you had to do was paint the tip. Uh, the one on the right is the one I've done before. You can see the brass shows up more on that because it's had time to cure. Um, and, the, and the one on the left is still a little bit dry. Um, but it's a great technique. Uh, I really, really would advise you to, to try it out. You don't have to use the colors I'm using. Like I say, you can, you can really play with this. But this is fantastic if you have several guys like i i would like these auto cannons i did 10 of them and then i did some flamer units for my salamanders while i was doing the uh, the commission piece there for the client and it's just so effective i think it looks fantastic i it's just so good it's so versatile you can use it in so many situations um and like i say mix up the paints mix up the variations have a play with it see what you get i'd, I'd love to see what you guys are doing anyway just a short video there, and I hope this helps helps you guys. Bye for now.